Hey, West Coast Johnny, how's it going? Thanks for stopping by. So I want to talk about and show you the problem. See that? When I bought my trailer, this piece uh, of this brass splitter was coming, splitting my lines of my propane tank. So I would have one uh, line go to my, the bottom of my stove top, and then one line would go to my heater, my propane heater. But this was the wrong way to hook it up. And he, what the owner, the old owner did was he um, put a bunch of tape thread all over this. And you're not ever supposed to put this stuff on a compression fitting. Okay. So what he did was he, he needed what was called a pipe thread and he didn't have it. So he used this. The threads are different. Okay. They're not one on one. It's parallel when they're tapered. So on this, it's they're parallel. So when he put this in, it was it just kept it never really got tight. So he just kept putting more stuff around it, and he crammed it in there, hoping gas wouldn't leak out. And then he just left it like that for years. That's completely the wrong thing to do. So let me show you how we're gonna fix it with the right parts. Follow me. All right, let me show you what I'm doing. This right here. This comes off my 20 pound tank cylinder, okay? My, my propane tank. And this is a low pressure regulator. So what happens is when the uh, gas is going through here, the propane, it's coming under under good pressure, a lot of pressure, but it comes out here very, very like light pressure, okay? So this, this is like, this takes it and just lets a little bit out. So you could light your appliances safely. And then what I wanted to say though was, see this? So this thread right here with the white tape thread, that's right, because this is a pipe fitting. You want to use that stuff. On this end, that's a pipe fitting too. So you want to use a pipe thread, 3 8 and you want to put the tape thread on this and put this in like this, okay? Now, you got to be careful because this side, which is a compression fitting, but it's also the same size thread, 3 8 will fit in here fine also see and you may do that with a bunch of the stuff on it like this like uh, I had that's all wrong this is as a matter of fact even though these are both 3 8 threads they're not even the same these are tapered these are parallel okay so you want to only put this side the pipe thread in here otherwise you're going to get leaks it's dangerous okay so then we're going to tighten this guy up. Now we have a compression fitting here. I'm going to get this little coupler. Okay. It's two compression fittings together. And then this is going to go on here and get snugged up real tight. Uh, no, ta no tape thread in here. Only here. Okay. None inside. Now this piece, and, and I got to take this thread off because that's wrong. You never want to put the thread on a compression fitting. We're going to screw this guy in real tight. I'm just kind of showing you what it's going to look like. So now on the front of the trailer, I will have this and then I'll have one line going out back to my stove top and one line going back out to my heater. So that's how you want to do it. And I did get some hoses today at the hardware store. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put these on because it's a nice sunny day. All right, I'm going to go ahead and install this fitting. I'm going to use a little piece of the the Teflon tape. It's yellow. They say it's made for gas lines, but I don't think there's any difference except it's thicker than the white Teflon tape. So there we go. See that? That's what we want. You don't want it on too much. You want to be able to see the pitch of the threads. I'm going to put this on. There. Perfect. Okay. All right. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to run some fittings. I have an elbow that goes like this and it's going to go down so that my two lines can go out, one to my stove, one to my heater. 
All right, let me show you my setup. What I've got, so now it's got, we've got tank, regulator, we have a, an elbow, it's called the street elbow, with the 3 8 pipe thread, a little extension goes down, a coupler, then a special adapter right here that goes from 3 8 pipe thread to 3 8 compression. Then we have this compression, like a little uh, sleeve, okay? It's like to hook two male connectors together. Then we have our splitter at the bottom. And we're gonna have one hose gas line go down like this, and one's gonna go down the other side. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plumb all this together using our yellow tape thread up in here. And then I gotta take all this Teflon off these compression fittings. And I'm gonna put a little Teflon in between here and in between here. Because wherever there's no compression fittings, you wanna put the Teflon tape. Now the yellow Teflon tape compared to the white Teflon tape, that's, here's the yellow. Now they say this is for gas and propane and whatnot. Or my hardware guy told me that he said there's a chemical in this yellow stuff that doesn't get eaten away like in the white stuff. But I couldn't find that anywhere online because I was wondering what, what chemical that was. And all they're saying is the yellow stuff is twice as thick as the white stuff and that's the only difference. So that's kind of interesting. So I'm going to go ahead and plumb all this right now. So I'm going to use a little of the yellow. Enough to go around the threads at least twice. You want to still see the pitch of the thread. So I got my street elbow in with my yellow Teflon tape. I got these pieces all tightened up really good. They're just, you know, compression fittings. We've got a little Teflon tape here. I got to put some in here and then between here and here. And that's going to go down like this. And then I'm going to run my gas lines. Okay, so now that I have the T, the T down low behind the battery box, I feel a little better because, um, like I said earlier, if all this was way up here and a, something hit it on the freeway, it could snap right off, you know. So I don't mind this out on the freeway and this pipe on the freeway because there's really nothing to harm like the soft brass stuff. So that is that. Now I'm going to run my, this is going to go to my stove. That's going to go to my heater. So I'm going to go ahead and tighten this up. It's nice that this swivels. Now 
Now this remember this is a compression fitting. So you don't want to over tighten it. You want it snug, really snug, but not over tightened, and you don't want to use any Teflon tape whatsoever. That's one side. Okay, nice and snug compression fitting. Now these should get have no leaks. And um, let's see, there we go. Just like that. Let me show you. It's gonna go just like this. So I'm just gonna have one going out and down for my my up uh, my up uh, heater and this one's just going to go down along and run down along and up and run for my um, Coleman stove top all right I'm going to go ahead and climb down here and I'm going to put this through the hole I have a little hole for my closet under my closet just for this Okay, so here's my the heater that I'm using, okay? And underneath it has the old hose that I'm replacing. So what I wanted to show you was, so here we go, we got some pipe fitting threads together with the tape thread. That's okay, but right here, see, now this, this is another compression fitting that shouldn't have that because it's gonna actually hurt the seal. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull all this off, clean the threads really nice, and put our new, so I could put our new compression line in here when we feed it through the floor. Okay, I'm still taking all this Teflon tape off. It's, it's uh, been coming off for a while, but like I said, you wanna get it all off. And to make sure everything is nice and clean. Okay, now that that's nice and clean, okay, we can go ahead and um, I'm gonna put this back in the camper up on the on its um, mount so that I could feed the line into this and then we can hook it up and test it I do have some slack you can see down there Got a bunch of slack. Look at that. That's what do you want? You want that. That's good. So I'm going to go ahead and then put the heater up here and then connect everything up. So unfortunately, if you hang this heater, you can't open or close the door. Uh, that's just the way it was, and it's to keep it, you know, off the floor and stuff. So. That's okay. I'm going to go ahead, hook this up. Okay, there we go. Feed this back through. Now, I would normally have to shut this. And then this hangs on this bracket. There, now it's all hooked up and ready to go. And it's off the floor. See that, that space? So yeah, sure, you could have probably lowered this to the floor and this would have opened, but you know what, I don't mind because I'm probably not gonna use this a whole lot. And if I do, it, it's it just, you know, it's very simple. It just hangs on two hooks. It's super cool. So that, now there is a safety feature I wanna show you. See this wire? This has to get attached. And that's so that this can't fall off if I'm driving down the road and I hit a bump. This is gonna keep it from coming off of here. But if I physically wanna take it off, I can. So we're gonna hook this up too. All right, I'm gonna run this one down and under and up for the stove top. Let's see. 
Where the heck does this go? Ah. I've never drilled a hole for it. I forgot. I replaced all the flooring in my trailer with all new marine plywood. And I never drilled a hole for this to go up under my sink area because at the time when I installed all the floor I wasn't really thinking about hooking this up I was just putting the floor in so I think this is a 5/8 I'm gonna measure it and I'm gonna go find a place inside that would be a good place for this to pop up and then I'm gonna go ahead and drill that hole Okay, so here's where we're going to drill the hole, right under the trailer. So see all this wood? This wood has all been fiberglass. It's 100% waterproof. It's been fiberglassed on both sides. It's been fiberglassed to the body above and below. So uh, the best place is going to be, so see this little wire? That is the ground wire right there. That's the ground for my marker light right here. So I know where that comes up and where that comes up is kind of where I want my um, fuel line to come up. It's, it's behind the cabinet. So I'm going to drill a hole right about here. Okay, now there's the hole and this barely fits in. Like I said, seven eighths, but see that extra gap? So when I put this where I want, okay, I'm going to have to fill all that up. So I'm going to use, again, like I'm saying, I got this really good RV sealant. It's 100% waterproof. In my opinion, it's better than silicone. And that is what I put right here on this wire. There's some of that on there. So moisture or insects, you know, ants. Ants can climb in there. They'll smell your food. If you're camping or something uh, so plus you don't want water getting in so I'm gonna go ahead and put this where I want I'm gonna seal it off all right so now it's connected and I'll probably reshape that a little bit so uh, the rigid part so it'll be more against the wall so I'll have plenty of room for my cooler so I'm gonna tighten this connection up because I want to um, test my stove all right well there it is okay so there they are they do work Okay, so for the loose lines that I have under the trailer, I'm going to use these guys. You can just kind of bend them and shape them however you want. You, if you want, you could just put one screw and just wrap this around your gas line. Uh, or you could just try to bend it and push it up. And I'm going to go do that right now. I'm looking for a certain size screw. There it is. That'll work. I wanted to show you how thick this fiberglass is on this wood. It was really hard to put this uh, little stainless screw in. I don't, I'm trying to focus so you can see. See all that fiberglass? That is the whole underside of my trailer on the wood. So. I just wanted you to see that because if you never saw the video where I fiberglassed all my flooring throughout, you know, it's all in some of my very beginning videos, but this is what you want to do. See that? It's, it's nice and loose. It's uh, the rubber is going to keep it from uh, getting cuts and stuff. So, you know, that's, that's perfect. I just didn't want it to 
be any lower. Okay. Okay, I just wanted to show you how I ran the line. So it comes, it comes down up through the frame here, and then it goes under, and then it comes out, and then it comes underneath this piece of frame all the way down. There's another connector. And then it goes up into the floor. So where it goes up into the floor, I'm going to put the sealant I've been talking about, the RV sealant. You can see my fiberglass. See all that fiberglass? So my whole entire floor is three-quarter inch fiberglass. It's really nice. And I highly recommend if you ever put a piece of plywood in your floor that you fiberglass both sides because if you can fiberglass both sides then it's virtually waterproof uh, just like a boat you know there's a lot of uh, boats made out of wood and then they fiberglass them and then that's it waterproof so if you want your trailer waterproof see when I bought this it was all full of water damage it was horrible the whole under the kitchen the back corners from water it destroyed the whole underneath of this place of this trailer so Alrighty. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, I'm going to get a couple zip ties and I'm going to put it here and then right around a little piece of my frame so that this doesn't move around. So we're going to do that real quick. Snip off the excess. Always looks better. And let me show you how it looks. One line zip tied to my frame and it comes down right here. This side comes down zip tied to a couple other things and then to a the little part of the frame disappears because I like things very streamlined. So now that's how it's going to look and there's no leaks. I tested and what else? All I got to do now is go test my heater and then this job's complete. So I'm cleaning the inside of my heater. Just getting all the dust and stuff out. And uh, what I have, it's called Mr. Heater. This is the top. I had to clean it. It was all dusty from sitting in my shop for two years. So I'm just going to go ahead and put this back together. I just wanted to clean it really well. All right. I'm going to go ahead and install this. All right. I got my furnace lit. There's the pilot light. So um, I'm going to go ahead and let's put it on. Okay, I see. Oh, it's getting warm quick. Hear that? Okay, turn that lower. Wow. Yeah, I feel all the heat already. So what's going to happen is the ceramics get really, really hot, and then the heat comes off the ceramic. I actually have a cracked one, see that? It cracked, cracked in half, so it still works. I used this once before to heat my shop up with the crack when it was cracked, but um, I'm gonna just get a new one of those. Okay, well that works, and I'm gonna go ahead and turn it off. Remember, when you turn off, your heater and you see that the propane is off you also don't forget to go turn your propane tank off because if you have any type of small leak and you don't know it you're gonna lose all your propane overnight okay so uh now that that's done it's just a few more interior things but i just wanted to make a video all about how i hooked up all my propane stuff so thanks for joining this episode please like and subscribe leave a comment and um, tomorrow i'm going to take everything out of here 
so I could heat this place up and fiberglass my brackets in place. All right, everybody, take care.